so good to just be in the presence of God. And it's just blown me away this morning. You know, I'm going to talk about the true temple of God, but just being in the presence of God this morning yeah. has just been absolutely amazing. Yeah. And it's good to be in the house of the Lord. It's good to remember who God is. It's good to remember of what he's done for us, yes. everything that he's done for us. It's good and then, um, you know, he cares about us so much right down to that little intricate detail. But he loves to hear us sing his praises as well. He loves to have us come into his presence and just lift his name up on high. It just blesses him so much. That's not in my notes, but God's so good. <laughs> Father God, I just wanna thank you that we can come into your presence, Lord. Yes. Father God, that Jesus made a way, Father. And Father God, I just thank you that, Lord, that you, you've been with us this morning, Father, in our worship time. But Father God, I thank you that you're also with us as we bring your word, Lord. Father God, I just pray, Lord, that, Lord, we'll have open hearts, Father. Father God, we'll have expectant hearts to hear from you, Father. Father God, I just praise you now, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Yes. Amen. Now I'm trying to get used to my glasses. <laughs> I've got computer glasses that are a bit like varial focal, so you'll have to bear with me. I'll be on and off all the time, I think. So last time, David spoke on about facing uh, persecution in Acts 6 um, and how Stephen had been um, arrested. And I'm going to look at the next chapter now, which is chapter 7. And um, I'm not going to read it all because it is, there's a lot there to read, um, but I am going to read some verses um, in a minute. But you know, as you look through chapter 7, when Stephen starts to address the Sanhedrin, he reminds them of their history, They're talking to the Jews here and the, um, the Pharisees. Um, he reminds them of their history, he reminds them about the father Abraham and how God chose him, the jealousy of Joseph and how he was sold. He spoke to them about how Moses was chosen by God, but they rejected him. And not only did they reject him, they also rejected God and they started to turn to idols. And he then begins to talk about the temple. And he started to talk, when he started to talk about the temple, this is what the Jews got really upset about. Because the charge against Stephen was this, that he'd spoken against the law and he'd spoken against the temple. You know, to the Jews, the temple was the thing. It was where God resides. Um, and that was so important to the Jews. It, first the law and then um, the temple where God reside, resided. And today I just want to look at a few verses. Uh, I'm going to use different versions here. But I just want to read this part. Uh, and it's Acts 7 and it's verses 44 to 50. And it says this, I'm going to read from the New Living Translation. It says, Our ancestors called the tabernacle with them through, sorry, our ancestors carried the tabernacle with them through the wilderness. It was constructed according to God's plan, um, the plan that had been given to Moses. Years later, when Joshua, our ancestor, Sorry, I told, I told you my glasses uh, play up there. <laughs> Years later, when Joshua led our ancestors into battle against the nations that God drove out of this land, the tabernacle was taken with them into the new territory. And he said, stayed there until the time of King David. 
David found favour with God and asked for the privilege of building a permanent temple for God, for the God of Jacob. But it was Solomon who actually built it. However, the Most High doesn't live in temples made by human hands. Remember that, we don't remember anything. However, the Most High doesn't live in temples made by human hands. As the prophet says, heaven is my throne and the earth is my footstool. Could you build me a temple as good as that, asks the Lord. Could you build me such a resting place? Didn't my hands make both heaven and earth? Another drink. So because the temple was such an important uh, thing to the Jews, and we would read um, how this is, uh, and you know, it says there in verse 48, it says, however, the Most High does not live in temples. And I think that's what really riled them because you know, the temple of God was where God lived. And now Stephen's turning around and saying, God doesn't live in a building. You know, God lives everywhere. And you know, sometimes I think um, that, you know, even us, we can come to church and we can think, this is where God resides. We come to this building, this is where God resides. And then, what does he do for the rest of the week? Does he have his feet up the rest of the week? No, he doesn't. He resides in his people. Yes. And his people are the church, not the building. And that's what I want to talk about really today um, as we go through um, this this morning. That God resides in his people. He doesn't reside in a building. So I just want to go through these, first, uh, th these verses and then we'll go on. Um, a bit further of what the true temple um, of God is. So when we look at these um, verses, it says in verse 44 about how God spoke to Moses. He gave him instruction. He gave him the blueprint of how the temple was to be not bricks and mortar, but a tent. And the Ark of the Covenant was to sit in the Holy of Holies the very throne room of God. And I put in brackets there, heaven on earth. You know, God resided in that tent. And you know, the people knew when God was there. Um, and you know, we can read all the stories, can't we? Uh, of the very presence of God being in that tabernacle, that tent. You know, the original tab tabernacle as well was temporary. It was never God's intention to be housed in a building. And with the tabernacle that Moses erected, as God led, the tabernacle went forward with it. And as God directed, stop here. That's where they stopped. They built the tabernacle. And God, the, 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 rest, sorry, the rest of the uh, tribes just encircled the tabernacle. God was right there at the centre um, of it. And in essence, he dwelt amongst his people. And also, he went before his people as well. You know, the ark was always carried before the people. And he was both with them day and night. That's really significant that God was at the centre. Because God needs to be at the centre of our lives too. This morning when we've been praising God and um, some of the things that have been said this morning, it is all about Jesus, it's all about God being centre um, in our lives. You know, in verse 45, it talks about Joshua and how the lands were given to Joshua. And as the lands were given, the ark went before and it, set, it was settled right there. You know, God has gone before us and, um, you know, it's so great to, to know that. And then David found favour 
in the eyes of God. And I was reminded of the story of David, you know, he sat there in his lavish um, palace and that, and he said, this isn't right, God's in a tent, and I'm sat here in this really uh, nice place. God should have a temple. But God said, no. Um, and, but in verse 47, it talks about how Solomon then did build a temple and it was a magnificent uh, temple that he built. But that wasn't what God asked for. That was not what God asked for. And then when we look at verses 49 and 50, it talks about heaven being the throne room, the very place where God rules. Earth is his footstool. He made the heavens and the earth. And I love this phrase that um, that said here. Uh, I'm going to read these these verses again. It says, "Heaven is my throne, the earth my footstool. What sort of house will you build for me?" says the Lord. What sort of house will you build for me? Or what is my resting place? And then it says in verse 50, Did not my hands make all these things? And something that came to me while I was preparing this was, How can the created compete with the Creator? They can. Because they were created by the Creator. So I want to look now at the true temple of God. You know, we are the temple of God, both individually and also corporately as the body. You know, God still dwells among his people and we are his sanctuary. And his spirit, the Holy Spirit, resides in us. And he must be central to every part of our life. The king needs to be upon his throne. Yes. You know, in 1 Corinthians 3, 16, I'm going to read two versions here. I'm going to read the, pan, uh, trash, the Passion Translation. And it says this, Don't you realise that together you have become God's inner sanctuary and that the Spirit of God makes his permanent home in you? <coughs> Does that not just blow you away? <coughs> Don't you realise that together you have become God's inner sanctuary? God dwells in each one of us. His spirit has a permanent home in each one of us. Now if someone desecrates God's inner sanctuary, God will desecrate him. For God's sanctuary is holy. And that is exactly who you are. Holy. And in the Amplified Version it says this, Again, do you not know and understand that you, the church, are the temple of God and that the Spirit of God dwells permanently in you, collectively and individually? And if anyone destroys the temple of God, corrupting it with false doctrine, God will destroy the destroyer. For the temple of God is holy, is sacred, and that is what you are. And I just think that that's so amazing that the, the Spirit of God resides in each one of us. It dwells in each one of us. And it's permanently. And it's not just us individually, it's us as a body as well. And you know, when the body comes together, God, well, he's already done amazing things this morning. God does amazing things and he really speaks to our hearts. Romans 8 verse 9 says, The Spirit of God resides in us. It says here, 
You, however, are not in the flesh, but in the spirit, since the spirit of God lives in you. But if anyone does not have the spirit of Christ, he does not belong to him. And that is key as well. You know, it says there, but if anyone does not have the spirit of Christ, he does not belong to him. We can only have that spirit if we belong to Jesus and that he's part of our life. You know, when I think about a temple and a sanctuary, I see it as a place to be close to God, to be close to the King of Kings, being in his very presence, being at one with him. The sanctuary of God is a place and I thought about this, it's a place of quietness, just, just reflecting on what God has done, what, who God is and everything that he is. But it's also a place of praise and thanksgiving um, because, you know, that's, you know, it doesn't just have to be on a Sunday morning that we have that praise and thanksgiving. We can have that praise and thanksgiving on a daily basis. You know, as we read the word, you know, God speaks to us through the word and God um, reveals things to us, sometimes things that we need to get right in our lives as well. But it is a place of praise and thanksgiving, thanking God for what he's done um, in our lives. And you know, when I think about that, I think David uh, got it right. Uh, in Psalm 27 and verse 4, he talks here about he desired to be in the very presence of God. And I want to ask you today, is that your desire to be in the very presence of God? Not just on a Sunday morning, but every day in the presence of God. You know, we need to be in the presence of God because that's where God is. That's where God speaks and that's where God just shows us um, what we need to do, where we need to be, where he wants to direct us to be, um, and that. And then it says a bit further in that um, verse, he gazed on the beauty of God. He is holy and we are holy because he is holy. He came to seek after God. He was expectant to hear from God. And you know, us, as individuals are we expecting every time to hear from God whether it's on a Sunday morning or whether it's in our quiet time or even you know God speaks to me so many times when I'm just out walking um, and uh, are we expecting to hear from God and um, because you know that is what we should be and then he talks about pouring out his heart uh, to God, does David in uh, Psalm 42. And as he walked amongst his people, he expressed his love for uh, God through joyful and a thankful heart. He lived out what was deep in his heart. And you know, as we are the temple of God, people should see that there's something different within us. And they should see that we've got a joy, we've got a peace, that passes all understanding. You know, the, the peace that the world offers isn't really peace, is it? It still causes worry, concern, but the peace of God, the peace of God that we have in our lives, it gives everything. We can trust our God, we can trust him in everything um, that we go through, even those hard times that we go through. And I, I know Karen mentioned it this morning, you know, the, the, the virus that we've uh, been going through, that has been a really hard time for some people more uh, than others. But you know, we can still have that peace of God, knowing that Jesus reigns in our lives, that he is the head in our temple, the throne of God is in our lives. And it says in Matthew 28 and verse 10, it says this, about the body, about the church, that where two or three are gathered, I am the great, I am is there amongst us. And I just think that is awesome to know that God 
The King of Kings, the Lord of Lords is amongst each one of us, you know, as we come together as a, a family, a group of people, just going all out for God. And we are the temple of God. He dwells amongst us. And I just think that's just so exciting. So exciting that, you know, that God dwells amongst us. Um, and we can gaze into his beauty. We can uh, gaze into his majesty and look at his glory. So just as we can experience God as the body, we can experience him in those personal times as well. You know, in 1 Corinthians 6 and verse 19, it says, we no longer belong to ourselves, but the Holy Spirit lives inside our sanctuary. You know, when we give our lives to Jesus, that's it, the old life, gone the new life in jesus the spirit of god inside of us 2 corinthians 6 16 says this and what agreement does god's sanctuary have with idols for you are the sanctuary of the living god as god said i will dwell among them and walk among them and i will will be their god and they will be my people. Doesn't that bless you? You are you're no longer part of this kingdom. You are part of the kingdom of God with the king reigning on his throne. And then he talks, um, this, this bit really um, blew my mind. God is building his church. He's building his true temple. And this is in Ephesians 2. I thought David was going to read this. <laughs> but again, I'm going to read this from the Passion Translation. And it says this. So you are not foreigners or guests, but rather you are a city, a children of the city of the Holy Ones, with all the rights as, a fam as family members of the household of God. You are rising like the perfect fitted stones of the temple and you, your lives have been built up together upon the foundation laid by the apostles and prophets and best of all, you are connected to the head cornerstone of the building, the anointed one, Jesus Christ himself. And then verse 21 says this, the entire building is under construction and is continually growing under his supervision until it rises completely as the holy temple of God, the Lord himself. This means that God is transforming each of you into the holy of holies. His dwelling place through the power of the Holy Spirit is in you. And you know, as I read through these verses, there was some, some things that really stuck out to me. You are rising like the perfect fitted stones of the temple. You know, to me, that it's there, it's just showing that God is building his temple. He's building his church. And you know, what blesses me is that you know, we are just the finished parts. There's more pieces to be added as well um, as this temple is built. But also it talks here about your lives have been built up together. And that's key as well because we are the temple of God. You know, we are the temple of God individually, but we're also the temple of God corporately as well. So each one of us is so important as this temple is being built. And we're being built together. And then he says here, you were connected to the head cornerstone of the building, the anointed one, Jesus Christ. And these verses clearly show how the Holy Spirit lives in each one of us and how our connection with the cornerstone, which is Jesus, 
He makes everything true and perfect. But it says there as well that the foundations um, were laid by the prophets. And it reminds me there that it's not man's plan, it's God's plan. And that's important. And that's one reason why, you know, as we've been going through this uh, teaching series of Acts, it says there, doesn't it? That the foundations were laid by the apostles and the prophets. So that's why we're going through this teaching because it is important that we get back to those foundations of, um, of you know, who we are as a church and everything about uh, God because it's not man's plan, it's God's plan. And I think how God gave Moses the blueprint of uh, how the tabernacle should look and God spoke to the prophets and the apostles of how the church should look as well a true temple of God and then in verse 21 it says this and um, I'm just going to read it again it says this entire building is under construction and it is continually growing under the supervision until it rises complete as the holy temple of the Lord himself this means that God is transforming each one of you into the Holy of Holies. His dwelling place through the power of the Holy Spirit living in you. So he is building the entire construction. And you know, a bit further on it talks there, under his supervision under his supervision so it can be completed to be everything that he has called it to be. And you know, I mentioned it before, but what blesses me on that verse is, he's continually growing, he's getting bigger, he's getting bigger and he's getting bigger. You know, God's church, God's temple is getting bigger. You know, Solomon built this magnificent temple. It was huge. It was beautiful, but that's nothing to be compared with the temple, the true temple of God, because it's so big. You know, don't we talk, don't we, about how wide God's love is, how deep it is, how high it is. The temple of God, wow. How, how big, how wide, how high. It's just uh, amazing that um, how big, you know, it just blows your mind really because you can't begin to imagine how big that temple is. And it says it's continually growing and it will continue to grow until it's, t until it's completely formed. And then Jesus will come back. This means that God is transforming each of you that blessed me as well. Each one of us is being transformed by the renewing of our mind. And it is so important that we're just constantly um, in the Word, spending time with God, and just um, allowing God to fill our temple with praise, with all wonder of what He wants um, to do. And you know, when I was thinking about this building, I thought of a dry stone wall um, being built. You know, every stone has a part to play. And it's from the inner depths of this wall to the outer depths of the wall. So, you know, what you actually see, these big stones. But right in the middle there, there's little stones as well. And those little stones are just as important as those big stones. You know, some of those stones might have started off as a bit of a wobbly stone, but when they come together, they become a strong defensive uh, wall. And it reminds me that the master builder knows exactly where each part needs to go to make that strong defensive wall. And then it reminds me of what God um, does as well. As he builds his church, as he builds that true temple, he knows every little bit that needs to change. You know, he knows each bit in our life that needs to change where 
there's things that don't actually match up with what the word says and things that need to change in our lives but he can sort all that out um, for us but he just puts those things in place and then it becomes a defensive wall so the master builder knows what he's doing when he's constructing that and so does god god knows every little part and where it needs to fit and i know we've touched on that when we've been speaking you know how important it is as a body that we bring everything that god has given us you know if we are the true temple god the holy spirit resides in each one of us the holy spirit has given or god has given us each gifts and it is important that we bring those gifts um, and whatever it is whether it's in the front or whether it's other things of serving uh, within uh, the body it doesn't matter but it is important that we allow those gifts to move because when we do that that builds the church up that makes the church strong uh, and it makes us stronger as a people because you know it's when we bring those gifts i'm going off there uh, but when we bring those gifts that um god really speaks to other people as well he speaks into people's lives and sometimes you might think that it's not a lot but to the one person it could be that what they need to hear from god so it is important that we um, do that So it says in Luke 17 and 21, it says this, the kingdom is not discovered in one place or another, for the kingdom uh, realm is already expanding within some of you. That's us, it's expanding in us. And that's through uh, the kingdom of God appearing um, through Jesus, through faith um, in us. So I just want to um, close uh, here, just with uh, three things. We are the temple of God, both individually and corporately. God is building his temple in everything he wants to be. Uh, sorry, he's building it in everything he wants it to be. And the third one, how does this impact our lives? We need to live lives that glorify him by being obedient to his word and his teachings. We need to love one another. We need to live in community as a family. These are three things to start with. I want to encourage you this morning to spend some time this week just to think about what the true temple is in your life and how you can begin to live out that uh, life with God both individually but also within the body as well Amen <laughs> That was such a key truth for me as I was growing up because we used to always talk about going to church, going somewhere as if God lived in a house. But to actually find that truth that we ourselves are the dwelling place of God, that's such a, a huge thing. Some of the biggest encounters, the most um, powerful encounters with the Lord I've ever had have not taken place in a building. They've taken place sometimes in my own bedroom, taken place in a, in a, a small gathering in someone's living room. The Holy Spirit lives in us. That's why Jesus said to his disciples, it's better for you that I go, because if I go, the Holy Spirit will come. And when the Holy Spirit comes, he lives in every single one of us. That's such a key truth for us to understand and to think about. And the thing that I felt challenged with as Rob was talking this morning, if we are the temple, how, what does that mean in terms of how I, what is what goes on in here? I don't know if I've expressed them, but what does it mean in terms of all the things that go on in here? You know, there's a, there's a passage I read in John, it says when Jesus came in and he, he says he took a whip, he made a whip out of ropes and he chased 
all this, all these other things over the temple, all these people that were doing things that were not honouring to God. He says, my house will be a house of prayer. And as Rob was talking, I thought, maybe there's things in my life, in this temple, that need to get out of the way to make sure that God is in first place. So I hope that's encouraging. Thanks.